home life. A book? Right there. Give a book. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. I'm scared. This is like cool because this is the color of my house. Is it? Oh. Yeah. I've been there. Okay, folks. We're gonna dive right into it because I want to make sure that we get as many uh, as as much content as possible. Is that too low? No, nope. you sound you sound you sound great. You yeah. Guys, you guys hear yourself in the headphones? Yeah. Everything good? Sorry. Sebastian, can you say something for me? Testing one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Ah. We'll get it. I'll, I'll get it dialed in as they go. I'm gonna change. Oh yeah, I didn't get some filters, so thank you for getting that. Yeah. Okay, Kevin, let me know when we're good. Uh, I am the retired vampire lord of West Hollywood. You're not retired. <laughs> I'm not retired. All right, retired. We're good. So it's waiting for me. How's how's her vocals compared to his? Can we bring her up, up a little? No, bit? I need like, some Godiva chocolate. <laughs> I could follow chocolate. This feels so low to me, but it's okay, right? No, no, no. I can adjust it. Let me make sure you're comfortable. Wherever you're, just, wherever you're sitting. I'm sitting. You're I'm, good. Yeah, that's okay. So it sounds okay. No, it sounds I'm, great. Okay, then I'm yeah. good. Yeah, we're good on the levels, right, Kev? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. And I'll dial them in as we go and get it tightened. With Perfect. Because it adjusts the. Try not to spit on anybody. So, so let let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and, uh, and start with Q1. Who is Patty? Reason for the show. Your experience. We're gonna have you hang tight. And we're gonna tease the interview. Tickle, tickle. Yeah. Tickle, tease. <laughs> here we go. Coming in. Good. Good to go, Kev. Yep. All right. Here we go. Take one. Three. Hello, everybody. My name is Patty Negri, and welcome to the Witching Hour, my brand new podcast that I'm really excited to bring to you. Every week, I'm going to bring you a little bit of magic that you can bring directly into your life. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am a psychic, I am a medium, and I'm a witch. I'm a good witch. Uh, I, I don't eat babies or turn people into frogs very often. Um, but I do believe in magic, and by that I mean that we really are in charge of our lives, of what we do with our lives. And I want to bring a little bit of that to you. In my years, and actually decades, of working with people, I found out how much we give away our power. We give away our power to other people. We give away our power to belief systems. We give away our power to fear, to just about anything we're willing to give our power away to. And I decided, wow, one of my gifts is actually seeing energy. So it's like I could see the tiniest little shift of a perception or shift of a view or shift of a anything, a shift of magic, and you've got your power back. So that's what this show is about. And on it, I'm going to bring amazing guests every week. We have an amazing guest today. I can't wait to tell you about him. One of my bestest friends in the whole planet, on the whole universe. And a pretty magical, amazing, empowering person himself, first quote. Um, and I'm also going to do a little bit of magic moments every week where I teach little tips and tricks and magical spells and workings where you can really bring that into your life as well. So. Please come along for the journey with me. It's going to develop as we go as I figure out what the heck it is, but I want to have you along for the ride. So welcome to the Magic Hour. Mark that, Kev. Okay. Oh, I said it wrong. Welcome to the, um, oh, the Witching Hour. I have to read the so, so, yeah, yeah. So let, let's go. Um, do, let's just go. Um, I, you want more of my history stuff? Yeah, you know what? That, that was only two minutes. Okay, so we're, I want... We're aiming for like 12, 15. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So let's, okay. let's go from the top. I think it'll be easier, Kev. We'll just okay, go from the top. top. Yep. Okay. And just take your time. Okay. Relax. I know. I talk to you. Uh, and then before you, before you, before you uh, end the segment, Kev, can we also turn off uh, Sebastian's mic? Because we're going to bring him on on the second segment. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, before you sign off, Go, don't you go nowhere. We have a special guest, one of my best friends. Okay. Uh, you probably heard of him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's let's start from the top. Okay. okay here we go. Take your time. I, I want to get like 12, 15 minutes. Okay. So take your time and talk about the stories and why why you started this in the beginning. Maybe your early accounts. Okay. Uh, right? I got it. I got it. Okay, here we go. In three, two. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Witching Hour. 
My name is Patty Negri, and I'm going to be your host and witch and guide through this magical hour every single week. Who is Patty Negri, you say? Well, I'm just your local neighborhood Hollywood witch. Uh, born this way, actually. I knew when I was three or four years old that I could see things not everybody saw. I knew that the invisible people under the bed that weren't imaginary really weren't imaginary. There were real beings that I could talk to and communicate with. I would travel outside of my body all the time and explain to my mom what color all the rooms and all the houses next door were. I actually just thought everybody could do this. I would find myself, that's the kind of psychic medium part of myself. Oh yeah, I'm a psychic medium too. Um, but the witchy part, I would find myself in my little suburban backyard in Long Beach, California, just picking rosemary off the bushes and going, wow, if I put some of this in my mom's wallet, she's gonna have more money. It's gonna bring in more money. And it did. So it's a blood witch, whatever means it's born in you. And I think a lot of us actually have that, whether you wanna use the title witch or shaman or angel guru or extraterrestrial person, um, or just insightful and intuitive. I believe that we can bring it out in everybody. So that's what I wanna do with you guys. With the Witching Hour, I wanna show people ways to pull their power back. In my decades, literally, of working with people one-on-one, -on -one, with my clients, in speaking, in teaching, in workshops, in my ritual work, I found out the one thing we all tend to do is give away our power. We give away our power to other people. We give away our power to belief systems. We give away our power to fear. And, and we're not even aware of it most of the time. It seems like a weird human treat that we're just happy that you make that decision. You tell me what to do. You tell me where to go. And just the t slightest little perception shifts, we pull that power back. And guess what? We could be 20,000 times happier. We can create the exact life we want to do. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to tell anybody that one belief system is better than the other. This isn't even going to be about belief systems at all. This is about energy and pulling your power back. So every week, I'm going to bring you amazing guests who themselves have found this way to have a magical life, an empowered life. I have an amazing guest for you today that I can't wait to tell you about, but you have to hold on. Um, but he's, you may have heard of him, and if you haven't, you will have. And every week also, I'm gonna bring you a little bit of magic. I'm gonna call it my magic moment. And that's where you, little tips, little tricks, little techniques, even rituals or thought patterns, where you yourself can pull that power back, create what you want in your life. Whether that's money, whether that's love, whether that's a better living situation, whether that's just a change in your perception. It's honestly as easy as you allow it to be or hard as you make it. And we silly humans just tend to make things hard all the time. So I'm changing that right now. <laughs> One hour a week, you're going to see how easy it is to live a joyous, happy, magical life. Mark this real quick. So, so you're going to say, you're going to say, so don't go nowhere. You're tuned in to the witching hour with Patty Negri. When we come back. Okay. Okay. Here we go. In three, two. So don't go anywhere. You are tuned in to The Witching Hour with Patty Negri. So be right back with a very, very special guest. Okay. Oh, mute. Kev, can we just clean that up right now? Yeah. All right. This is hard. I'm saying you just want to add that to the back of the um... Yeah, let's, let's just clean the beginning. Let's take the count out and then just, just add that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll get better every week. I, 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 I know you will. I've, I've heard you on the radio before. Okay. All right, I cleaned up that. Good part. to go. Talking about the beginning. Too. Yeah, the beginning. Let's let's just take take the count countdown out. We want to get rid of the whole yep. start over. Yes, sir. Now what? We'll, now we'll move over to the right. We'll leave a lot of a lot of space, so that when I, I can visually see the, the ramp, so you can move that over. Retired. Like, yep. Vampire. 
Okay. So, okay. Uh, Sebastian, you good? Go ahead, you say something for me? Hello. <laughs> okay. All right. So, now welcome back. You're tuned in to, you're listening to uh, The Witching Hour with Patty Negri. And then we'll go into here. Now, that first segment was, was three minutes. Still short. Okay. But I'll get better. you'll you'll I get so many stories, but I just seem nervous. Let's be... let's talk about stories. I want you guys to just this is we're gonna we're gonna make this this now we have to compensate on this. Okay. But it'll be easier because both of you guys have many stories to talk about. Okay. Right. So here here's your intro. Welcome back. It is the Witching Hour with Patty Negri, and like I told you before, I got a special guest. Introduce him and go right into okay. it. Okay. Okay. We're good to go, Kev. Yes. Here we go in three, two. Welcome back. You are watching. Pause, pause. Here we go. Uh, go and uh, delete that. That's okay. Here we go in three, two. Welcome back to the Witching Hour with Patty Negri. Now I'm going to introduce my very, very special guest. He is one of my best friends in the entire planet. I actually met him on an episode of Ghost Adventures. For some of you who know me know that I work regularly with Zach Bagans and the Ghost Adventure crew on the Travel Channel, number one show for the last 10 plus years, Ghost Adventures. And I was shooting the Halloween special a couple years ago, knew nothing about anything. Zach pretty much blindfolded me and hid me into a dark in his haunted museum and said, okay, Patty, tell me what's going on. And I was seeing all this crazy stuff going on in my little psychic mind. I was seeing somebody with a doll and a baby and a little girl. I was seeing somebody crash out and fall on the floor. I was seeing some magical work. And the person crashing on the floor turned out to be one of my best friends. Um, you may have heard of him, you may not, you will now. He is the king of all the vampires in my mind. And I think everybody else is, though he doesn't use that term. But I would like to introduce you to Father Sebastian. Hi, welcome, Father. Thank you so much for coming on. Greetings, Patty. I am so happy to have you. Number one, because you're my dearest friend and I wanted somebody on my first show. And I am a little nervous. Don't tell anybody, you guys. This is my first show with this show. You're so cute. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so anyway, all of a sudden there was this beautiful vampire in my life and who, when we first met, he was doing, I think you were doing magic on Bella Lugosi's mirror? I was practicing vampiric sorcery and Zach asked me to come and investigate a mirror of Bella Lugosi and I thought, well, you know, Zach can pull cheesy stuff off really cool. So I said, why not? So I grabbed myself a fairy, joined a fairy cat, and we investigated the mirror. And to this day, I will not go back in that room. Yeah, it's a quiet room. For those of you who don't know, Zach Bagans, he has in Las Vegas, Nevada, Zach Bagans Haunted Museum. If you want to see the most haunted things on all the planet, he's bought things from all around the world. Some of it really dark and morbid, like a lot of Charles Manson stuff and a lot of things from the biggest, baddest serial killers in all the world. And also the most haunted items, like Bella Lugosi's mirror, like the Dybbuk box. The Dybbuk um, box. The Dybbuk box. So crazy things have happened to crazy people there. I think I've filmed there three different times now. Um, so what did that room do to you, that mirror? I'm hesitant to discuss it. Okay, then well, you don't have to. But we should. Okay, then you can't. Okay, then I'm gonna force it out of you. Ooh, my first conflict on the first episode. I love that. Okay, discuss it, whether you want to or not. Well, I'm not gonna do a Zach Baggins impersonation. Okay. Because he'll get mad at us. He will not get mad. However, one of the things that I strongly adhere to is that membrane that connects the, that barrier, that veil, that wall, the membrane that is, must be crossed to interact with the 
spirit world. Mm -hmm. And as we all are ghosts in the machine, walking spirits animated by physical flesh, there are portals that are gateways between this world and the other, the astral, the subtle reality. It goes by many names. Some people call it the spirit world. And the witching hour is a time when that barrier, that wall, that veil thins. You call it the veil, I call it the ether. When that thins, there can be interaction between the realms. That is tangible. That is observable by the five senses. ESP is just the ability to see the other side. And tools exist to be able to cross that barrier. And one of them is a black scribe. Zach had that was just happened to be on that double dose. And like you know, you know the fish that inhabit their own little caves or bear inhabiting a cave. Or a, or a troll under a bridge, something was blocking the barrier between this world and that world. A spirit, I still don't know what it is, but I faced it. And the first thing I did was I <coughs> tried to tap into Zach's motives of antagonizing. Boy, was that a mistake. <laughs> I went up to the mirror, I opened the mirror, partner was behind me and she was monitoring a device that allowed to see my movement I looked into the mirror and this is the first time I believe I've talked about this on radio yay I'm honored um, and as I opened the mirror kind of like in Stargate how the Stargate <laughs> open the wormhole and there'll be like water looking things it looked like the mirror went and started waving like waves of water then it looked like koi the backs of koi like koi were swimming mm. <clears throat> and then suddenly I felt an entity I couldn't see it but I could feel it jump out into me and I turned around and I wanted to hurt my violently and it was these were not my emotions right there was something else you were possessed yeah I've been there a couple times it was a very short experience it was maybe three four seconds and from previous possessions I learned how to push it out yeah. pushed it out and I passed it out yeah you did <laughs> and I woke up in Zach's arms to Which, the dismay of many of his female fans. I was just going to say, the fantasy worldwide about half of the planet, <laughs> women, women and men, mostly women. Um, yeah, that is an interesting thing. And you, because a place is charged. His place, when you have energy, is charged and charged. We use a lot of different terms for things. I love that you brought that up, because I'm going to talk about this on the show too, what I call the veil and you call the ether, this side, that side. Because um, to me, our belief system that we put on it is just kind of like a template. It's a roadmap for us to use. They're all right, or many of them are right. It's just what words and terms you use within your path. And we are mixing up. I'm aware it, I work a very elemental path. My witch path is an elemental one. Um, kind of Southern Conjure, a little bit of, you know, just Garden Witch. Um, and learning your vampiric path, we, it's very hand in hand, just different words, different deity, different things. I think the interact, the energies are the same because it's made up of the same star stuff. Yeah. But the intention, the intention, the processes, yeah. the architects are different. Yeah. So, but again, and, and so whether somebody who's listening, again, that's why we don't want to change anybody's belief system. Somebody might take a very traditional Christian or Judeo Christian. Um, it's that's your template that's great somebody might want my grandfather was this very famous atheist very big Hollywood following and his template was actually almost the same but using very scientific academic 
atheist terms, but almost the same path within. So I love taking everything down to energy. So I love working with you, and I've learned so much from you and your path and what you've been following. And I like to get them all mixed up in a really great big soup. One of my main magical practices is that of the, the chaos magician, which very few people understand. So one of the paradigms, which are different schools of magic that I practice, is the path of the warlock. Just beginning the journey. Yeah, and it's fabulous. The vampire warlock. Now for those fellow witches out there, um, where warlock has been a negative term for many, many years, male witches were just called male witches, there is a new trend that male witches are calling themselves warlocks. Christian Day has started it, Michael Carell has started it, so Father Sebastian has, and he's getting more witchy or warlocky, and I'm getting more vampiric, so more well, soup. I thought LaVey used the term witch or warlock for a second. So, a, a satanic witch is a woman who uses her sexual power to manipulate men, which I think is cool. <laughs> yeah, whatever you use. Um, Again, we're not going there with this show into, well, no, we can go, we can go anywhere, every show. We have no limits. But uh, for people who don't know me yet, um, as they learn my form of witchcraft, it, it's nothing scary. It's, it, I don't even, it's Satan, true. yeah. I promise. You have cute fuzzy animals everywhere. I, I have cute fuzzy animals everywhere. I work with dragons. I work with fairies. I, I work with all sorts of deities and, and things. And we're all black. But I, but I wear all black almost all the time, except not always working out. Um, but a Satan, actually, in the form that most people think about it, isn't even in my cosmology. I'll grow up with Lucifer, which we can get into a whole different thing, or the or the devil of sorts, but, but not in Satan, because, again, that's just not... Uh, a form, an architect form that works with who I am because I really do work light. Satan is French. Is it? He? Yeah. It? What? It. <laughs> they? The modern interpretation <laughs> of Satan was invented in the 19th century. Hmm. But that's another story for another time. Okay. See, we have stories. We're going to go everywhere on this show. Um, so what is it you found, really, you have been the leader of the vampire community. Uh, what I've seen in these last few years of being close with you, you're an amazing fangsmith. You make the very best custom fangs in the world because I have a pair. That's how we got to be friends. I've been fanged by Father Sebastian. Which, when I first, <laughs> when you offered to do that, I'm like, oh, I don't know. My idea of vampires at that point was like, mm, I, I don't know that I want this because I'm real picky about what I do and who I am but when I learned about you which I did I read about you and I read your work and I read your books I go okay there's nothing here that conflict conflicts with who I am and what I believe so then I was fanged but you have these beautiful balls all over the world so how did all this happen what is your who, who are you what do you do what do people it's all my mother's fault yeah yes tell us well when I was 13 my mother and I were sitting Said, Tom Cruise is losing weight at the end of the episode. And I'm like, what's, what's that? And she goes, Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles interview with the vampire. I go, okay, whatever. And then five years later, I saw the blue film. And it changed my life. I'll never be the same. Forever grateful to her. <laughs> the real queen of the vampires is Anne Rice, queen of the band herself, the author of the Vampire Chronicle series of books. She is the second greatest influence in vampirism, the vampire mythos. The first, of course, is Bram Stoker, and the third is Vampire the Masquerade. Mm -hmm. I like to support the truth in my in watching the patterns manifest. But archetypes, according to Carl Jung, are kind of like character classes in D&D or houses in Harry Potter that you use to form your thoughts. Everybody forms archetypes. There's an American archetype. There's a male archetype. There's a female archetype. And those shift and change and evolve. So the vampire is a powerful archetype. And I don't 
don't see myself as an immortal uh, flying around and turning up bats and just and stuff like that. I can do that in my dreams, mm -hmm. but not in the physical, tangible world of the five senses. So my journey really became solid when I started working on a project called The Black Veils, sponsored by the incarnations. But I really focused on making the Black Veils a inspiration, not a law, Good. for the vampire subculture to give definition. And you can write Black Veils for anything. Like there's a Black Veil that there's a Kaaba Black Veil for the Mystic Water Group. Um, then there are Black Veils on honor, nobility, and chivalry, and life force, and energy. There are 500 word essays that be able to give you an idea. And then they, the Black Veil started as a code of conduct for a nightclub that I used to have called Long Black Veil and the Vampire Lounge that ran from March of 1997 to June of 2000 wow. at a little club on 14th Street in Washington in New York City. We were on Thursday nights. And we were, that club was called Mother. And it was in the meatpacking district. And the vampires from around the world gathered in that place. And that's where the Black Veils were born. And it's gone through many incarnations, and I finally took all my research and I put it under the Black Belt banner. And I'm releasing a secret book in September. You can get the lexicon, which is a published book on Amazon. However, the really hardcore book, the serious book, you have to have a password to be able to buy it or know where to get it. And the password changes every month, so you've got to be on a special mailing list. Cool. Mystery. I like that. Yes. Because I like mystery and magic. You mentioned, um, again, you are very influential in lots of people. We just very recently had your Los Angeles ball, and it was amazing. People, I, I met and spent pretty much a week with people from all over the world, from France, from England, from Spain, from Mexico, from it, just all points, gather together. People with like-mindedness, some of the nicest and most magical people you've ever met. The endless is the nickname we give to the people that attended the Cypher community at our little the events. Oh, nice. And Sabretooths are my fan clients. And Endless Night Productions began as an event production company for me. People to wear my fangs, give them a reason to wear the fangs, other than walking down the street, street and scaring children. <laughs> Which is fun too. <laughs> well, the kids think it's awesome now. Yeah. I remember 20 years ago, sitting on the subway, and I had my newspaper out, and this kid was just being a little brat. So I put my newspaper down, and, I, and he like freaked out. And then I put my newspaper up, and then I see a little hand on top of the newspaper and pull it down. It was on the you know, five train from the Bronx. And he just looked at me, and I was like, that little Asian kid. And he was like totally entranced by it. Well, about 15 years later, he came and got his fans. Wow. Look at that. You affected his life. That is yeah. awesome. There is something powerful about them. I noticed the first time. I mean, there's a whole ritual you get getting them. Um, I have a theatrical background. I come from an acting background. Um, and it's the same as when you do mask work. Like anybody in acting 101, you learn to put masks on and then you're not yourself anymore. You take on different aspects within that mask. The fanging is the very same thing. You bring out that animal within yourself and you're a, it's like a permission for you to bring out parts of yourself or new parts that maybe you've never seen that maybe you don't get to in your real life. Fangs are very interesting because I made my mother my first pair uh, Christmas Day 1994. My mom is my Call her Lady N among the endless. An endless night is a community. Yeah. And we throw events, like you said, around the world. Well, not truly around the world. Only in Europe and the United States. And I, we, we were going to go to Japan this spring. That's not an option. Right. Cra crazy stuff out there. Yeah. So, I uh, 
I started making things and I realized that it changed people's lives. It was a rite of initiation, it was a rite of passage. And when you look at someone for the first time, they look in the mirror after they get their fangs, then, like in Lost Boys, some vampires explode when you destroy them. Some turn into flames. <laughs> some implode. Some explode. Stuff like that. Every person that gets their fangs, I make it a secret before they look at them. And when they look in the mirror, oh man, is there a transformation. A lot of people have waited years for this. Uh, and it's a, some cry, some stare, some laugh, some scream. It's always fun to like see like, you know, most unexpected reactions. And the diversity of people that I make things for is amazing. I made people, I made things for people from over 50 countries. That's amazing. And they all are a community. Yeah. And, it, it's, and it's a really creative community, a, a close community. That's what I just, again, I just, oh yeah, I like these people. I like these vampires. Not what I thought they were at all. Well, <laughs> They, you know, they're cool like witches. Um, all the same. I, I stick to myself. I, I like to, you know, there's many different <coughs> vampire groups out there, and I like to create a safe environment for people to gather and express themselves. And so, if people were interested in getting a pair of Father Sebastian fangs or coming to one of your balls, how do people find you? Well, they can find me at Father Sebastian. I A A N at Instagram or Father Seb on Twitter. I don't tweet a lot, but you can find me. I'm very active on Instagram, or you can go to my websites, FatherSebastian.com. Again, it's an I A A N, or you can go to EndlessNight.com, and that is my event production company. So, right now, I'm taking a hiatus from making fangs because of what's going on in the world. Probably be until the beginning of May. Wow. Just to be safe and cautious for my clients and myself. And really reevaluate where it is. But things you can, I work at a Memento Mori, a fang shop in uh, Hollywood, and Halloween Adventure in New York at 104 4th Avenue. I've been there for 25 years. That's beautiful. And again, I think everybody needs a pair of Father Sebastian fans. <laughs> Just saying. I, I almost always have mine with me. I, I could reach into my purse right now and I have them. I have nothing else in my purse, but I have my fangs. And don't leave home without them. Don't leave home without them. <laughs> they're, better, they're better than American Express. Mm -hmm. I have so many funny stories about people wearing the fangs, like the story about the little Asian kid that came up and he, he's, I hadn't seen him in years, but that was really cool. He was so cute and like those beautiful eyes, or those beautiful dark brown eyes and the fascination of the glare, the glare on his thing. So fangs represent four things. They represent a connection to your primal nature. They represent a mask, a shape shift. They represent a magic trick because they're so real to you and the other person. A suspension of belief. And finally, they're a sex toy. <laughs> awesome. Well, on that note, don't go. Don't go anywhere because we're going to be right pa back. Pa pause real quick. Mark that for me, Kev. All right. So, no, 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 yeah. That perfect. was in or that wasn't in? No, I no. don't know all your signals yet. Perfect. That, that's why I stopped. It's, it's fine. I'll, I'll edit it. So, go. Uh, so, I want you to say, wow, that, that was an amazing story, Father, Father Sebastian. Hang out with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, magic moments. Moon magic. Moon magic, right. Okay. okay. Here we go in three, two. Wow, that was a fantastic story, Father Sebastian. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody, I am Patty Negri, and you are listening to The Witching Hour. Don't go away. We're going to be right back, and we're going to do a little bit of magic, a little magic moments. And today, we're going to work on moon magic. Be right back. Kev, let's, let's just clean that real quick. Perfect. That that was over twenty minutes. Good. And that, that felt just, that that felt natural, right? Good, it did. 
Yeah, I have to learn all your signs. Stop. Don't yeah. stop. So it'll be break. We're going to go for a break. Stop. I love that. It was a perfect place to end. Let's do it. So, so go ahead and, and skip. Let's let's do a whole lot of space after that so that we can see it. Um, okay, so let's come back. You're listening to uh, The Witching Hour. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at, oh, okay. right? We're here with my friend, uh, Father Sebastian. And now it's um, Magic Moments segment. This is, we want to talk about moon magic and then go into that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Ready, Kev? Yep. In three. Welcome back. You are listening to The Witching Hour. I am Patty Negri. Please follow me on social media. My Instagram is patty.negri, P-A-T-T-I dot N-E-G-R-I. Um, Facebook, Patty Negri or Patty Negri Psychic Medium. Twitter, Patty Negri, or just find it all clumped together at pattynegri.com. We are here with my guests and my best friend, Father Sebastian. And now we're going to talk about a little bit of magic from our magic moment segment. My very first one, still excited, still nervous. Thank you guys for putting up with me. Anyway, I'm a moon girl. I'm not so much a planet girl. I love astrology and I believe in it wholeheartedly. It's a little too left brain and mathematics for my little head thinking, but I live by moon and moon cycles. We are run by the moon. Everybody talks about the full moon. Yes, okay, the crazy Ow. full moon. Oh, yes, I got a vampire. We howl. Um, you know, police, hospitals, fire, they all say, oh, full moon, everybody's crazy. Well, we're actually affected by every single moon system. Our bodies are 60, almost 70% water. We, these are our tides. We are run by them. So if we would just tap into literally the tides of our lives, we could make our lives easy. What if, if you... If, you, if I told you that just by awareness of the moon and the moon cycles, you can make everything in your life a little bit easier, a little bit smoother, a little bit more flowier, like the moon energy. Because that moon is, it's the feminine, it's for men and women, but it's the flow of things. So, um, this is from my book. I haven't even talked about my book yet. Okay, I have a book. It's called Old World Magic for the Modern World, Tips, Tricks, and Techniques to Empower and Create a Life You Love. You could buy it on Amazon, you could buy it in a print copy, an ebook download, or an audio book. Um, Amazon, it's cheap, get it. I spent more time unwriting it than writing it just to make it really easy that you could pick it up and go, okay, let's do some love magic. Okay. It took her years. It took me years to unwrite it and write it, write it and then unwrite it. Um, but one of the chapters is called Moon Magic. Going back to that, because again, in working with people every day like I do, I see that the struggle that we all create for ourselves. And I see how we are affected by this moon energy. So just try this for one month experiment. Um, look, follow the moon cycle. It's on your calendar, it's on your cell phone. Every full moon, get outside. It's a two day option, don't get crazy with it. But every full moon, if you can get outside, get outside. If you can't get outside, look out the window. If you can't look out the window, just imagine the full moon right by you. Number 